So this is uh, number two, uh, false assumption number two that says if I'm spiritual enough, I'll have no pain or sin. Um, oh, well, before we start, anything that we need to be uh, praying about? Anybody need anything? I know. Is it okay if I share that, Alan? Uh, Tan is tested positive. She doesn't have other than fever and tiredness. She's doing okay. Larissa's surgery went well uh, today. She's resting. So anything else that we need to be aware of? Be, stay in prayer for Dot for, since the loss of her sister-in-law and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And others that have lost Thank loved you. ones, too, here. So. Oh, Bunny, Bunny lost her brother. Yeah, Bunny lost yeah. her brother. Mm-hmm. So. so does Tannis feel okay, Alan? Yeah, no, she's got a slight temperature and really tired, but other than that, she feels fine. Okay, good. Well, let me open us up in prayer. Father, thank you for today. I thank you for this evening. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for these folks joining in. And I know there may be a few others and that come on in just a little bit. And I pray that our discussion will be um, uh, good, that it'll be, uh, in, uh, well, informative, obviously, but that we'll learn something and gain from it and um, be able to be better uh, disciples, better um, children, better stewards of your word. Uh, Father, we're mindful of the folks that we've mentioned and just pray a blessing on them, uh, healing, comfort, peace, um, uh, whatever the need may be. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, so this, this one is a little, um, well, not real close, but a little similar to the one uh, that we looked at uh, last week. But it says, if, if I'm spiritual enough, I'll have no pain or sin. So th there's um, um, a lot of, and you, you may know some, and hopefully none of you fall into this, this pit, or, or maybe you've fell in it uh, before, um, but... Um, that if a lot of times we tend to think that if something's wrong, it's because we're not spiritual enough. We're not doing something. We're not performing the way we need to, or we're not. And so there's a little snippet right there at the beginning uh, said Ted was discouraged. In fact, he felt so depressed that he wondered if he really were a Christian. To fight against his feelings of depression, he increased his Bible study, listened to all the spiritual life tapes he could get his hands on, but he only felt more depressed. Because of some things he had been taught in church, Ted believed that his feelings of depression must be the result of a spiritual failure. Um, so, like Ted, there's a lot of folks that, that might tend to ascribe to this false assumption or this idea that if I'm spiritual enough, I will have no pain or imperfections. Um, in other words, if I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to spiritually, then everything should fall into place. And if it's not falling into place, then that means that I'm not doing something right uh, as far in a spiritual uh, vein. Um, and I know one, and I don't know, this is probably sort of kin, but I'll, I'll, I'll visit with a lot of people who have probably not been... I'll use the word faithful as far as in their attendance or in their prayer life or in their Bible study or whatever it may be. And they kind of get into a difficult situation and they're, um, which is good. I'm not, don't misunderstand me, but their thinking is, okay, well, I'll, I'll start going to church again. I'll start praying again. I'll start reading my Bible again. I'll start. And they do that and things gradually get a little bit better. And then it's like, okay, I'm good. And so all of a sudden, you know, well, at least church attendance, I can't say the other part, but, 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 uh, but I know probably in, in, in years past uh, when my faith was a little uh, younger, um, I know that I probably fell into this pit and I know people who have, who have um, got caught up in this um, particular uh, assumption 
And those that do that tend to live under this cloud that there are only two options. I either try harder or I just give up altogether. So hopefully uh, there is a, um, um, I don't know if a happy medium is the right word, but there is a uh, something other than one of those two options. I want to read an excerpt out of this book. This book, by the way, is uh, it's titled 12 Christian Beliefs That Can Drive You Crazy or Relief from False Assumptions. It's by uh, uh, Cloud and Townsend. Uh, you may re recognize those two names, Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Towson. Townsend, who wrote the book uh, uh, Boundaries. It's, this is uh, we're talking about Job. He says, as his depression deepened, Job wished only to die. I prefer strangling and death rather than this body of mine. This is Job chapter 7, verse 15. This hero of faith was not living what we would call an abundant life. When Job's infamous friends came to comfort him, they were quick to voice this false assumption. Should not your piety be your confidence and your blameless ways, your hope? Consider now, who being innocent has ever perished? Where were the upright, or yeah, where were the upright ever destroyed? It's out of Job 4. <clears throat> In other words, you will be protected from pain if you are truly holy. Does God prevent justice? Does the Almighty, I'm sorry, does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. But if you will look to God and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your rightful place. That's from Job 8. In other words, you suffer because you sin. If you are truly good, you won't hurt. From Job 11. Yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then you will lift up your face without shame. You will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. In other words, if you depend wholly on God and stay away from sin, your pain will go away. And then from Job 22, yield now and be at peace with him. Thereby good will come to you. Please receive instruction from his mouth and establish his words in your heart. In other words, the remedy for your pain is to yield to God and study his word. The message Job received from his friends is familiar. You suffer because you have failed spiritually, so get your act together, and then God will bless you and deliver you from your sin. Because their message to Job was neither biblical nor real, God rebuked his friends. I am angry with you because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So what happens when we... Um, uncover in ourselves, let's say, feelings that good Christians are not supposed to feel, or we find ourselves doing what good Christians shouldn't do. I think you've got fill in the blanks there. What, what, are, what are some things that, I guess, some ways that we react or some ways that we cope? How do we tend to um, avoid the pain? Can you think of anything? In the past, I numbed it. Numbed it? Okay. Yeah. That, and uh, well, I guess, go ahead. Whether, whether it was with alcohol or mind altering drugs or whatever, or even food, it changed the way I felt. You know, okay. so I, I would reach out for whatever and make me feel better. Okay. Yeah. He, he, I think that probably falls under the, the, the idea of denial. In other words, pretending that the sin or the pain is not there. You know, if I can, if I can somehow deny that it's there, if I can uh, just ignore it, if I can do something to make it go away, then I don't have to deal with it. Um, 
denial compels uh, us to judge others because in our denial, we can't see them clearly. So it's like, I wanna, I wanna put it off on somebody else. My problem is not mine, it's someone else's. It's, it's what someone else has done. And I, I, actually we're gonna come to that, look into that a little bit more, um, but it's not always that way. Sometimes we use that as, as, a, as a crush or an excuse to point the finger at somebody else so we don't have to take responsibility. Um, Matt, uh, so, sorry, Psalm 139, 23 and 24, David says, David suspected that he had offensive ways in him and he asked God to reveal them to him. So we want to be open with what we're feeling, especially with God. And hopefully at some point with others, uh, we want to be open. We want to confess that so that healing can begin. Uh, Matthew 7 Verses 20 through 23, Jesus points out over and over again the need to confess and face our sinfulness. So it's, it's important. We, we, we don't run away from it. We don't turn from it. We, we actually, um, gosh, I don't know if dive into it uh, necessarily, but it's, um, and, and one, one thing I tell people all the time is if you can't, confess it to someone or you're not ready to confess it to someone, say it out loud so that you can hear yourself say it because that makes it more real. And in making it, and also it, it gives you, it gives you more power to uh, more power over it so that you have more control of the emotion as opposed to the emotion uh, controlling you. Okay, what might be another way that we try to avoid the pain? And, you know, think back up to, the, uh, to that uh, second paragraph up top. We either try harder or we give up. So what would another way of trying harder look like? Well, sometimes it's staying away from people that cause us a lot of pain. Okay. And sometimes that can be somebody that's in your family. Yes. Uh, somebody very close to you, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of pain. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I, we're going to get to that in just a minute, a little bit more along that, uh, uh, as far as people causing pain to us. When we talk about trying harder, what about working, working harder to make up for our faults, trying to improve ourselves, which I'm not saying it's all bad, but I think where we probably get confused or we probably get lost is we, we do that kind of on our own. It's this idea of pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps and not really relying or, 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 or asking God to come in for his spirit to come in and work alongside of us. It's basically this idea of I'm not doing, I'm not doing enough. I need to do more. I need to re read more or serve more or, you know, I need to join another committee or whatever it may be. It's like beating ourselves into submission. Uh, but the reality is that we cannot work our way out of an emotion. Um, remember that emotions are neutral. Um, we can work on our behavior. Uh, we can work on our thoughts. And, and by doing those, we can have it, uh, an impact or an effect on our emotion and hopefully change that emotion. But the, um, the only way that I'm going to successfully deal, work through that emotion is to own it. Is, I know this sounds kind of paradoxical, but it's to embrace it and name it and, and um, kind of move through it. There's a third one there that he talks about in the book, and it's, it's uh, quote unquote, putting it under the law. Um, we tend to think that our guilt will cause us to change. But what is it the law does? What, what does the law do? One thing, it lets us know we can't do it ourselves. Okay, yeah. We gotta rely on God. One, okay, we can't do it ourselves. We have to rely on God. Um, what well, else? it makes us aware of what bad things we're doing. Okay, yeah, it, it, it certainly makes us aware, but that's all it does, you know. But we think that if we 
um, it's, I guess it's kind of like sort of, but maybe somewhere in between that. If we, if I feel if the guiltier I feel, the harder I will work to try to change that. And the reality is that no, <laughs> the guiltier I feel, the you know the the the, the worse I feel about myself, the the, the less I want to do about uh, things. One one thing that I uh, tell people, guilt is not necessarily a bad thing. Guilt does, guilt shows that you have a conscience. Guilt shows, guilt tells me that there's something I need to work on. I shouldn't, I mean, maybe I feel bad a little bit, but I shouldn't really feel bad because it, it, it tells me that there's something that I need to do. Um, okay, questions, thoughts, comments? <clears throat> All right, so the next uh, point there is not all negative feelings are sin. But what happens if or when we think this, this away? So, so what are, this is kind of a hard question to, what are negative feelings, or no, when, I guess, when are negative feelings not sin? Okay, so what are negative feelings? Let's name some negative feelings. The ones that we struggle with that we don't want. I mean, anger's one. Are we? First of all, emotions are neutral. Okay, they're neither positive or negative. But we, the our reaction to those emotions tend to put those in one light or the other. And so, when you think about angry, how do we typically react to anger? in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So we, we tend to want to label that as a negative emotion. So what are some other, I'll use that word lightly, negative emotions that we may want to classify as sin, but because of maybe something that's happened to us, they are very justifiable. Fear. Fear, okay, good. What else? <clears throat> Repulsion. Okay. Repulsion. Annoyance. Okay. Annoyance. <laughs> hey, those are all good. I mean, there's hurt. Yeah, I, I, I've got, I'm, I'm good at this. <laughs> Rejection. Rejection. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like that. You don't like that one? Uh, no, I don't like that. Hurt. Uh, maybe one, um, but you know, think about, or, or maybe you know somebody, hopefully it, it hasn't been you, and I'm not asking anybody to share, but do you know people, or do you know of situations, and can you share, or do you want to share, if you will, of someone who maybe something traumatic happened to them, and they were struggling with their emotions, and they were felt or they were made to feel shame because they shouldn't be feeling those because those are negative or you're a Christian. So therefore you should forgive and you shouldn't let that bother you. Something along that line. What if you lose a family member? Okay. You are going to have a lot of emotions. Okay. And some will be negative. Sure, hey, that sure. disease took him or her, mm -hmm. or somebody crashed into their car and killed him. Okay. There's going to be feelings there. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, what is one, sometimes we say, oh, I understand, or it's going to be okay, or, you know, God will take care of it. Everything will work out. You know, we, 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 we and, and I don't, I'm not saying those are, um, necessarily wrong or bad i think what they fail to do is they fail to validate a person's emotions yeah. And, yeah. and when when a person is not validated then they tend to if they're not validated there's this tendency to think okay well then i'm then if if i'm not maybe i'm not supposed to feel this and sometimes they get caught in this trap and if they're feeling that, well, they think, okay, well, I must not be spiritual enough. And, and then that, you know, starts a whole 
um, spi or downward spiral of, uh, and you can get into all kinds of, you know, I, I mean, I have a personal example that, uh, of a family member um, on uh, Larissa's side who um, was perpetrated upon by a sibling and for years, uh, of course, part of it was there was some denial there, but also um, it's just kind of like, you know, he's your brother, you need to forgive him, you need to move on. And it wasn't until she actually really got into some counseling and began to really look at and, and deal with that she began to realize, no, I mean, well, forgiveness, yes, but not, not only were they look, pushing for forgiveness, they were also pushing for reconciliation, which is a whole different thing. And so, um, but the big thing was, is that her feelings, her emotions were never validated. They were always minimized or, or, or pushed aside, or she was made to feel less than because, you know, so when we, when we don't deal with the feelings, the way that we need to, or I guess the way that we well, I don't know if should's the right word, but the way that we need to, what are some things that, um, that we struggle with? Again, more, more fill in the blanks, but um, what, are some, um, what are some feelings that we may struggle with if we don't, if we don't deal with them correctly? What are things that we may do or feel Play read my mind. Well, the, the sibling that was abusing his sister, did she think that was just normal activity? Oh no, no, uh, nobody no, yeah, nobody thought it was normal, but some some people may think that. Oh yeah, no, you're well, right. It's just normal, he's gonna do that, so I'm also well just back off and let him do it. Oh yeah, no, yeah, certainly there are some that are that way. No, no, it wasn't normal, but it was just, it was, it was minimized. Was never given proper. Um, well, dealt with properly, I guess. But one of those is feelings of failure. Somebody uh, look at Romans seven, and read fourteen and fifteen. Romans seven fourteen and fifteen. <clears throat> that fourteen and fifteen. Yeah, Romans seven fourteen and fifteen. All right. We know that the law is spiritual. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do or what I want to do. I do not do, but what I hate, I do. Okay, now drop down to 18. To 18? Yeah. Okay. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. Okay, and, and then 21, Rich. 21? Yeah. Okay. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Okay. So what, what, is, what is it about failure? Is, would you say that failure is normal? Thank you, Alan. Okay, yeah, it's very, it's normal. We're all going to fail. There's, there's no way around it. Um, to, to teach or say otherwise puts us in a no-win situation. Okay. Uh, now that doesn't mean that we just go ahead and fail because we can. We definitely need to be working otherwise, but we, we need to realize that at times we're going to stumble. And it's not the end of the world, you know. Um, 
Luke 9, 24. Somebody read Luke 9, 24. See if you can figure out what the second blank is. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. Okay. That's a little vague, I guess, but what is it that we, says whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses it, what is it that we always try to do? Well, do things our way. Do things our way. Okay. Or we try to fix things. You know, we think, okay, well, I, I will. And so it's basically wasted energy is, is the, the, the answer there. Human effort alone, alone, human effort alone never transformed anyone. Um, so, yes, we need to work, but we also need to realize that we need God's spirit to be working with us. Because if we just try to do it on our own, we're not going to get very far at all. Uh, okay, number three there, 1 John 1, 9, and then James 5, 16. 1 John 1, 9, and James 5, 16. Somebody read those. I've got 1 John 1, 9. Okay. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just, just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Okay, thanks, Dan. Somebody got James five. Uh, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Okay, so I don't know if this is the necessarily the opposite, but what is our tendency when we're feeling some of those feelings? Our, our tendency is probably not to confess. Our tendency is to do what? To hide. Hide. Okay. To try Thank to you. cover it up. Yes. What, what was it that when God came to look for Adam and Eve, he couldn't find them? What did they say? Yeah, we were ashamed and we were hiding. We were ashamed. We were hiding. Okay. And yeah. Uh, actually, there's a question. Um, well, it's on this next page about, you know, nobody wants to, con I, I don't want to confess my dirty uh, sins. Uh, it's, it's hard enough, you know, if you will, to, um, I guess, to own, to own up myself. But the reality is, if I don't put them out there, and that's why I said earlier, I, and I definitely, it's definitely important to confess those to someone else. I think, you know, uh, ho hopefully confessing them to someone that you trust, confessing them to someone who's, you know, going to keep it uh, between you all. But if anything, when you confess those to God, confess them out loud, say, say them out loud so you can hear yourself say them. Um, and because that allows you then to hopefully take a little bit more control over them. But, but what happens when we confess them to others? What is, the, what is one good thing that comes about of confessing it to someone else? They're out there then. Well, yeah, they're out there. Okay. I think they, it helps for someone else to be praying for you about yes. those. Okay. You, you've got somebody else in your court. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little, there's some accountability there and hopefully they, whoever you confess it to, um, certainly is not going to shame you, but it may even identify with you, may be able to, or, or may know someone and not that they're going to go blab, but they may know someone that's struggling with the exact same thing. And then you realize, oh, I'm not in the boat by myself because so many of us get caught up in that, that, well, I'm the only one that struggles with this. And so, you know, kind of thing. Um, 
So Matthew, number four there, Matthew 18.35. What does Matthew 18.35 say? <clears throat> this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Okay, so that, that's that whole parable about, um, and, and actually the answer there is unforgiveness. What happens when we hold on to things and we don't let them go? We hold on to unforgiveness towards the person who offended us, mm -hmm. um, which is not good. No. Um, now, and this is where, and I know we've, I've talked about it before. You guys have heard me, but there's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is for our benefit. We need to forgive so that we can let go. But forgiving does not necessarily mean recon or well, 100% reconciliation. It may look different. It, it, there may never be reconciliation depending on whatever what the offense was. But it's important to because a lot of a lot of people think that. If I, so if I forgive, that means I have to make amends and I have to, uh, which, I mean, there may need, need some, be some amends that need to be made, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to restore your relationship with that person to ever where it was before. That may never be possible. If we hide, if we hide the pain of the past, we can't forgive those who injured us. And then the last one there, is somebody read first John 4 19? First John 4 19. We love because he first loved us. Okay, so are we born with the ability to love? Well, that's a very open. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I want to say yes, but how is it that we really do learn to love? Hopefully from example. Right. Yeah. Because someone loved us. Yeah. First, God loved us first. That's why we love. But also we learn to love because our parents love us and they also model that so that we know how to, how to act. So, and remember when um, um, the prostitute went to, uh, when Jesus was at Simon's house and the prostitute went in there and she cried all over him and washed his feet and then put perfume on. And, you know, what did he say to Simon? He said, the one who has been forgiven much loves much. The one who has been forgiven little loves little. And so the, the more the more we're able to forgive, the more, uh, or the better, I guess, we're able to love. If, if, if we're not willing to forgive, if we're not able to forgive, we're not willing to forgive, the love that we feel for anybody is going to be limited because we, we're guarded. We're reserved because we're afraid we're going to get hurt. We don't want to let anybody in. Thoughts, questions, comments? Okay, so section D there says, um, number one, sinfulness is normal, okay? We're going to sin. There's no way around it. Uh, we do our best. We do everything we can, uh, you know, to try to avoid the pitfalls. Um, but inevitably, whether conscientiously or subconsciously, unconsciously, whatever, we're going to sin. Um, and uh, um, not to put Tannis on the spot, but, you know, <laughs> she, I, I texted her day and she said, yeah, I don't know. I wear my mask everywhere. I try to do my best. And, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, at some, hopefully we don't all get it. But, but you know, we, we can do anything and everything. But because of our human nature, because of the fallenness, we're going to do that. And, and 
that's the whole point. That's the whole reason Jesus had to die because we were never going to be able to fix it ourselves. It was he that was going to have to come uh, and, and, and fix that for us. However, and I already said this, but just because it's normal doesn't mean that we can just go ahead and do it. Galatians 5.13 says, don't use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. So we've been freed, but just because we're freed, you know, Romans, I think six something says, you know, shall we go on sinning so grace may abound by no means. You know, we don't, it's there. It covers us, but we don't do it intentionally just because it's available. Uh, number two, their negative feelings are normal, not sinful when they arise from a sin against you. Okay. So if I'm feeling like you said, Paul, if, you know, something happened to, uh, you know, someone was killed or whatever, it's okay for me to feel the feelings I have. But it's also important for me to talk about those feelings. It's important for me to, um, to make sure that I'm verbalizing those feelings with someone, that I'm doing what I can to work through them. Number three, we need to deal appropriately with both sets. And I, both sets here meaning those that I guess you would say are justified, if you will, and those that are not. So it's important that we confess and forsake our sin but it's also important that we take our pain to God where it can be loved and healed. And then the last one there, the gospel is grace and we must grow in it. So if we're still condemning ourselves, what does that say? If we're still kind of beating ourselves up, what, what does that say about where we're at in the process? This is not the answer you're looking for, but my answer is it means we're normal. Well, it means we're normal. Okay, yeah. Um, no, it's, well, the answer is we hadn't fully accepted. And, and, and in other words, and also, I think one thing that's important to remember, it may or may not be a, a, a one and done. It may be an ongoing process. It may be an ongoing process for weeks, for months, Sometimes it may be an ongoing process for years, but I think the important thing is that we're continually doing what we can to work through it and allowing God's grace to come in and cover us and fill us, um, accepting that grace, accepting that forgiveness and, and working to move on. Well, with that too, we learn from God what grace is. Right, right. And, and, and yeah, and also, you know, when, when, when we get to the point where we can accept something, the next time something comes around, it's that much easier. I don't know if that's the best word, but it's that much easier to kind of accept because we, um, it worked the first time, for lack of a better way to say it, we know that it's going to work again. We know that we're going to get resolved from it. But then again, sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it to takes really a while. learn what grace is. Right, right. And so it the important, excuse me. The important thing is that we're that we're always in the battle. You know, I, I when people are struggling, to me that's a great sign because if you're struggling, it means that you're still in the battle. Because if you're not struggling, that means you've probably given up. And that's not good. Um, so there's some, there's some questions there. Uh, the first four are really kind of personal. So I'm going to kind of leave those uh, to you to kind of look at on your own. But I want to uh, just number five real quick. If you are taught that spirituality means no pain or sinfulness, you will bear a variety of bad fruit. Remember last week, if you joined us, we talked about how um, uh, the fruit or, or, or the behavior is basically a uh, manifestation or a kind of the surface of what the root problem is. 
And so if we, uh, if we, um, if, if the root system is bad, then we're going to bad, you know, if there's, if there's hidden anger under there or whatever, then we're, that's going to be manifested somehow in our behavior and our actions. So bad fruit. If we work on the root system and, and, and cultivate and fix the root system, then we're going to, um, we're going to take care of that. And the fruit that comes out is going to be good fruit. But it says, what will you do or what can you do to replace that crop with good fruit? There's a typo there. With the good fruit that God longs for you to experience. What can we do to replace this bad crop with the good fruit that God wants us or longs for us to experience? What are some things that we can do? We've actually kind of talked about those, but I guess just kind of recapping real quick. Well, we, first of all, we have, we have to recognize that, it's, um, that we are sinful by nature. Uh, secondly, we have to, hopefully we have to uh, um, repent and we have to, and in, in repentance, we ought to be able to share that with someone that we have confidence in that they can help us through that. And then if we can't do that, hopefully we can at least um, ask God to help us, um, you know, uh, through, through that. You know, right. and Good. Help, help him to um, to be able to get us to the place where we need to be and and produce good fruit. Good. Okay. Other thoughts or comments or questions? I think probably the the, the two key things is number one. Um, our emotions have nothing to do with our spirituality. Our spirituality is based more on fact, on knowledge, um, knowing uh, what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say that at times our faith is not going to get hit, that, you know, we're not going to be jolted. But I don't think, but, you know, struggling with an issue, whatever it may be, doesn't necessarily mean that we're less spiritual. And, and then probably the next thing is to make sure that we are continually confessing those things, putting those things out there, making them known. Again, if anything, just out loud to God, uh, but preferably to someone else, so that we do have some accountability and, 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 and some validation and also, you know, uh, maybe some assurance that what we're dealing with is okay, that there's nothing wrong in feeling the emotions that we feel, um, but we need, to, uh, we need to work through them. You know, I'm sure all of you know, folks, that there's, I guess there's two things that you can do with a traumatic situation. You can either uh, waller in it and use it as a crutch, uh, you know, for the rest of your life to say, well, you know, I was whatever. And, and so this is the way I am, or you can learn from it and you can move on. Uh, you can grow and you can help others that are struggling with the same thing. <clears throat> so, okay. Thoughts, questions, comments. All right. If not, I appreciate you joining in. Can I get somebody to close us out with a prayer? And uh, we'll see you next week. Don't all volunteer at once. <laughs> I'll be glad to. Thanks, Lanny. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings that you provide for us. Thank you for uh, Brian and his work uh, in working through this lesson with us, Father, and we ask that um, in, in everything that we do, um, the things that you would have us do, Father, and that uh, despite uh, the things that happen in our lives that uh, might be negative, um, help us to deal with um, our emotions to the degree that uh, we can produce good fruit, Father. 
help us, Father, to always remember that um, uh, you're there and that we have faith uh, that uh, no matter what we do, uh, no matter how bad that might be, uh, that you're willing to uh, always love us and, and take us under your arm, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for sending Christ uh, to be our Savior and, and the fact that we, uh, when we sin, that you forget about that because of uh, because of his death on the cross and, and his um, his resurrection. Father, we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Great. Thanks. Amen. All right. Y'all have a great rest of the evening and a great week, and we'll see you next next week. Thank you so much, Thanks, Brian. Uh, you bet. Thanks, Brian. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thanks, yes. Brian. Mm -hmm.